What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Pace Studio here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. We are broadcasting to you live from the Manhattan Center here on 34th Street, as always. And we are really, really pleased to welcome Dr. Dog to the studio. Guys, what is going on? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Welcome to the city. I don't know if you guys, I know you're on a little bit of a break. Are you in Philly these days? Do you hang out in Philly, or does that not happen anymore? Uh, we, I mean, when we're there, we're yeah. kind of there. When you're there, you're there. there. Yeah, and when you're we're here, kind of barely anywhere, you are here. Yes, now we're we are very here. We're, yeah, this is definitely downtown Manhattan. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. Home. Yeah, it's 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 upper downtown Manhattan. Upper te- downtown. Technically, yeah. yeah, it's a weird neighborhood. These guys have a new record coming out this Friday, April twenty seventh. It's called Critical Equations. It's your tenth album. Congrats on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're gonna hear a couple songs from the new record plus an older one. Uh, so we're really psyched to hear some new music. Uh, tell me a little bit about what we're starting off with today. Uh, we're starting off with um, a song called Casual Free Fall from our last album, Abandoned Mansions. All right. Cool.
Guys, thank you so much. That sort of was like the perfect song from, I feel like, the intro that went into it. Like, you guys are where you are and not where you are not. We are all here together. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Man, Kinda that was like, that was like cosmic. Um, and, you know, so I wanted to, it's sort of, I was thinking about the new record, too, uh, which comes out April 27, that's Friday, called Critical Equation. Um, and the songs that I've heard from it thus far, much like that one, um, it seems like in, you know, the, the, the music that you guys have been making recently and the music I've heard on this record so far, one of the concepts to my ears is like the idea of sort of doing more with less sonically seems to be part of the, the formula uh, f for the music. Is that something that you were sort of going for on, on this new one? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say that's become kind of the primary goal as aesthetically and how that pertains as well to your just general headspace, you know, to kind of focus more on your instincts and your intuition and um, the aspects of music that manifest that, like the feel of it and the mood of it and, and not overthink it and not overwork it or overly intellectualize it. So, um, yeah, that's like just been a really, really great way to refocus on on making music because it uh it's challenging but it's like this kind of balancing act where you might have just nailed it as long as you don't over overthink it yeah know? it seems like there's a you know especially nowadays with everything that an artist is capable of doing in a studio uh like with the touch of a button it would be really easy to sort of indulge those instincts. Yeah. And you guys have had a lot of records where like there's just so much sound, so many layers and a lot of kinetic energy. Um, I mean, was it was it difficult to really kind of pair yourselves back or was it just sort of the natural feel of making music now? Well, that was definitely a goal to pair things back. And then we set, we were extremely limited in what we could do. We did it all to tape and it was only 16 tracks. So there you have it. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a lot of room to, uh, to add a bunch of extra noise or like, okay, let's try this, let's try that. It's kind of like well, you got to go in, know what you're doing, execute it, and then get out. And be happy no with the choice. result. <laughs> like, there's no other, you know, there's no room. You know, yeah. there's no, uh, you can, uh, yeah, to go down that rabbit hole, which we've definitely done and we've definitely indulged and overindulged and we'll probably do it again. But like, it's just to not even have that be an option is, is freeing in and of itself. Yeah, cool. Um, nice. We're going to hear, uh, we're going to do a couple more with Dr. Dog and, uh, these next two coming up, uh, are on this new record. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about this next one. Um, buzzing in the lights. The next one we're going to play. It's a song Toby wrote. Um, anything you'd like to say about buzzing in the lights? It's another chill one. It's another <laughs> mood vibe one. I noticed all the songs we're doing today are kind of chill. It suits the format too. Yeah, I've it, never actually seen you guys in this kind of formation. Uh, like chill with acoustic and like, you know, seems to suit this record pretty well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? We'll do our best.
Thank you. So, um, you know, I was listening to that song. Also, uh, the song that I was listening to sort of the most leading up to today, as I was listening to the songs that I got off this record, uh, was Listening In, which is the first track on the record. Also has kind of like a mellow vibe to it. But uh, lyrically, like that song, you know, like seems to me I'm watching someone else's dream. And Listening In also seems to have kind of, a, I don't know, like a, a, a different perspective, a, a removed kind of a perspective, uh, you know, watching the world from outside. And I was thinking about, like, you know, the the sonics of it, which you guys were talking about, putting limits on yourself. Like, do the, does the lyrical content, does that, do these kinds of concepts and the music stuff kind of go together? Was there, like, a an underlying through line to what you guys are talking about on this record? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, like, a lyrically, I guess the equivalent to some of the things we were talking about before that apply lyrically are a desire to increase the amount of directness, um, that sort of straight line to feeling as though what you're saying is truly what you mean and it's unguarded and, um, and open and available. Um, and um, yeah, that definitely seems to be part of the evolution of our songwriting, or at least part of the focus as of recently. And in line with that same goal of, you know, just trying to simplify it and making the elements that are there that much more um, effective and, and, and direct. Yeah. And when you guys are writing, I mean, is it sort of like when you are changing or, or evolving how you guys do what you do, is it all kind of like relative to what you've done before? Or are you, you know, are there things out in the world, whether they're political or, you know, romantic or whatever, like the, the does a lot of stuff filter in from the outside affect how you guys write? Or is it sort of like we want to be do something different than we did on, you know, the last record? I'd say all of that. I mean, it's definitely um, a reflection of what we've ever done before. I mean, that, that, that part you can't deny because that's just part of who you are. It's like, okay, I'm going to respond to the other stuff I've always done or respond to the other stuff he's always done and that we've always done as a band. Like, you have to respond to that. And then, obviously, there's outside influences, too. I mean, it's kind of a pointless... I realize what I'm saying now is kind of pointless. But I mean, it was my question that was pointless. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yes, yes, all of that. And then, and uh, yeah, and it's, 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 it's just trying to find your voice within all that mishmash, all the kind of information you're taking in and like, okay, what am I, what am I doing? Like, what am I trying to say? How do I actually feel? And then, you know, a lot of times you just have to write just to... Uh, just to figure that out. Just okay, what is my voice here? What is my purpose? What what is functional? What is dysfunctional in whatever way I'm thinking about this kind of thing and whatever I'm whatever your output is too. I mean, there's so many songs like 
I know it's true for me, probably true for Scott too, that I would never show these guys because it was just like, oof, oh, I tried that. That <laughs> was an utter and complete failure. Nobody needs to know that. It's like totally ashamed that, you know, that kids can hear like me overdubbing these horrible backup vocals to a song I don't even like. Yeah, it'll be on the B-sides, right? No. No, yeah. Some of the stuff won't. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff will, though. So this is sort of different from how you guys used to do it, like in your in your younger years, you're starting out making records kind of on your own, not with sort of outside producers in terms of like really wanting to distill things, uh, be, be clear? Is this something that has sort of come with maturing as a, as a band? Yeah, that seems safe to say. I mean, it's a, something we've been down the path of for a while now, you know, like it wasn't just kind of born spontaneously right before we got to work on Critical Equation. Like Abandoned Mansions was made, I guess, three or four years ago, and I felt like that was really the first time... Um, up until that point, we were just at a weird spot at that point as a band because we had just finished working a live album, which we gave the full amount of attention to, which be like touring and promoting and stuff. But it was a bunch of stuff that we were, it was just a live version of stuff that we had written and recorded a long time ago. And so um, it was this weird time vacuum where all of a sudden it came out the other side of that, having not really worked on anything new for over a year. Um, at which point we got right into Abandoned Mansions, which at that time felt like exactly what we wanted to be doing, which was stripping it down, simplifying, playing live more, looking for subtlety and nuance, and look, looking to simplify the recording process and stuff. Um, but then weirdly, we had to put that album aside in order to do The Swamp, which thrust us right back into this weird, tangential, distracting thing, which was this super old record that we wanted to see it through, and we did this, um, you know, it'd been on the back burner for so long and we finally had the chance to, to do it um, because of this grant we had gotten to collaborate with a theater group to put together a play around that record. Um, so it made, time, made sense to do that album, which was sort of like the second chapter of this album we'd made in the 90s. Yeah. So it was once again pulled back out of the moment and put back into this weird um, exercise in like getting back into your headspace 15 years ago or whatever. Um, and so then we went out on tour and did that. All this stuff reflects like a year and a half's worth of time, you know. So, um, but Abandoned Mansions really was like sort of, I think, our first exercise in what it is we are now still continuing to do. But, you know, it's also this method and stuff for us is very, it's very basic. It's nothing radical that we're talking about here, you know. It's a, and, and that's what I thought was interesting about your question of is all this stuff insular or is it more of a response to things? I think with us... Like Toby said, it's all those things, but there's no denying how insular it, it gets, you know, because um, we tend to go through these phases like, oh, we did we did that for a while. What's what's not that? Yeah. You know? And that limits sort of your decisions on where you're going to move forward from. But every record's had a degree of, you know, real basic tracking, live tracking, simple process and stuff. But um, um, that's just sort of the more of what we've been choosing to focus on more um which probably in its most elemental sense is just about musical feel like i think the more we be the more we've toured and played as a band the more you experience the kind of transcendence of a simple rhythm or a feel you know and that's something that we haven't spent a ton of a ton of time in their studio really working on that much you know i mean that's always a part of it you know intuitively if it's feeling good or not but yeah um there's something real magical about that, you know, and it doesn't take much. It doesn't take a, a crazy idea or some weird sound to realize that, like, something is authentic is occurring, you know. And so um, slowly we've just been kind of, like, sweeping our focus into that thing, which to me represents, like, the most fundamental musical idea, um, feel and emotion. And um, the abstract side of that even is, like, yeah. even the side of that that pertains to um, the non-lyrical part of it cool man um nice we're gonna hear uh we're gonna do one more with dr dog uh this is another cut off the new record Criti critical equation tell me a little bit about this last one uh critical equation yeah this is has become the title track it was like pretty much the last song we tracked and it happened super fast and had this great um um feel to the experience uh of, of recording it and um it was eric who suggested that maybe it become the 
album title, which suddenly seemed to make a lot of sense just because, you know, for us, titles is like, it first and foremost has to work as like a title, even devoid of any meaning or intent. Does it sound like a title, you know? And so it served that. Um, but then also it just sort of fit on a more conceptual level too because of the ease which was the song came about and how unlabored it, it was and also just sort of the dire sense of finding the right headspace that, that's been going into the band in this last year and the critical nature of like needing to figure these things out because the stakes are too high to be giving so much of your time and so much of your life to this thing and putting yourself on a stage in front of people and not always knowing why. And so uh, that sort of defines a lot of the stuff that we've been after this year. And so um, that as a title ended up kind of feeling um, appropriate as well. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, the song is just like, like many songs started as a different thing than it ended up becoming. And um, it was one of those things where I had written probably three times as many lyrics that currently exist in it and wasn't really sure what it was about and it was really impressionistic. And then once you just decided like, oh, if I just choose all the verses that have this sort of running theme to them, then you can kind of create meaning around that, like organize it afterwards. So it has that had that weird aspect even to its writing where it wasn't being thought about too much. It was just kind of going off of a feel and then just like kind of responding to what was there and letting some sort of weird internal sense of rationality like say that, no, this verse doesn't belong. I had verses... Like I, a bunch, when I first wrote it, I kind of thought I was writing this song that would be funny about like how the like the the like the lousy sides of being in a band, like sitting in an airport or like watching some crappy band at a festival or something. You know, it had a bunch of verses like that. So it was just like coming from all over the place. And then um, Gus, the guy Gus Seyfert who produced it, he had a big hand in just like sort of trimming it down and finding a more cohesive identity for it inside of the big pile that it was. And then um, it was also for me an exercise in just writing songs that somewhere along the line I've come to believe you're not supposed to write, which are like really basic cliched chord progressions from like 50s and 60s, all these music and stuff. And I started getting into this headspace where I was like, why, why am I not allowed to do that? What, you know, all the music I listen to does this thing. What, why is it? why is it not accessible to me, you know? And so I was like in a heavy handed way writing really overtly oldies inspired tunes, which to me was this weird private, like self-righteous songwriter mode I was in. And to Gus was just like, yeah, you know, that's like every song ever written already. So we got to do something about that. And which was ironic and funny. Cause I was like, yeah, I get it. Like, I didn't reinvent the wheel here or anything, but don't you see the merit in that? Like, don't you see what I'm trying to do by doing that? And he didn't. And he was like, now nah, we got to change it, man. <laughs> so, so he just like, in a very subtle way, you know, kind of, you know, for all those musicians out there who know this. You know the 150 million songs that exist with that progression. It was enough for Gus to just be like, don't go right to the G. Just wait. And I was like, oh, so that's all you're asking for, just like these tiny variations and stuff, you know, so... That was a neat part of the collaborative process and aspects like that, like these complicated things that, you know, it's two different people who don't really know each other. I'm this guy who's got this song and while it's simple, it represents this whole thing to me personally. To, he, to him on this kind of very surface oriented level is like, well, there's a problem. We got to change that. Not realizing what it is that brought me to that in the first place and then having this conversation and sitting down with guitars and being like, okay, you're not trying to turn this into like some kind of pretentious song. You just need some little twist to make yourself feel like um, something new is occurring or something, you know, for lack of a better word. Yeah, cool. And uh, and and I'm I'm thankful for that aspect of working with him. He's 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 really really awesome and really good at kind of getting the point across. And so that's all I'll say about it. Until later, when I'll say a lot more about it. <laughs> <laughs> two.
Guys, thank you so much. Uh, everybody, this, of course, is Dr. Dog. Uh, we just heard a couple of songs from the new record, which is called Critical Equation. That was the title track we just heard. Uh, the record is out this Friday, April 27th. Um, these guys are on tour. They're, I think, just like a break between legs of tour. Uh, next one comes up on May 2nd in Boston. And then uh, there is a date here in New York City at Brooklyn Steel on June 19th. But all these dates are at drdogmusic.com, as are some videos and songs and all the good info that people go to the internet to find. Uh, so guys, congrats on the record thank and you. have a great thank tour. You. And thank you so much for coming to Pay Studio and playing for us today. But of course. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, please us. come back and play again anytime, all right? Awesome. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. One, two, three, four.